Hey guys, STL Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to get you kind of this beginner's guide to Star Citizen Alpha 2.0 now that it's been released to the masses. And I've gotten a ton of requests for this, but I also want to try and make this as brief as I possibly can because there's a lot to cover. Now if you've been away or you're just getting into Star Citizen now, 2.0 is a huge step in the development of the game, um, as it's really kind of our first open world experience that we're going to get. It's not just a flight sim combat mode anymore. It's our first real taste of the universe. And if you think what we have now is small, take note that we're just flying around the moons and the stations that are orbiting one gas giant in just one system. This thing is going to be big. Now to get this started, I did want to say that I'm not going to be covering every specific topic out there because especially when talking about keybinds, some people are playing with gamepad, some people are playing with mouse and keyboard or HOTUS or dual stick. Um, and just all the other different control schemes. So things like key bindings are going to be really hard to nail down. That being said, I am going to show you how you can check and change your key bindings in the game. And that actually seems like a nice place to start. So let's go ahead and do that. From the main menu, you're going to want to go over to the options button and then select key bindings. And at this screen, you have the detailed layout for the default settings for the mouse and keyboard, which is kind of the most popular setup that we have right now. You can also use the arrows to kind of scroll right to see what the default loadout is for the gamepad and then again for a joystick. Now these are just the defaults, so you're probably going to want to make them your own. And to do that, you just click the button in the bottom lower right hand corner called Advanced Controls Customization. Now we could spend an hour talking about everything that we have in here, but I just wanted you to give you a kind of a quick taste of how you can make these changes so you can get up and running how you like. Then you can run through all of these and kind of get it comfortable to what you want to see. The keybinds are broken down into different categories. So let's start with movement, since that's going to be the one I think most of you are going to want to make the changes to. In this example, we're going to show you how to change your strafe key. So you scroll down until you find strafe, and once you find what you're looking for, you just double click on it with the left mouse button, and that'll kind of give you the scrolling countdown, at which time you just press what key you want to enter, and that's pretty much it. It's that simple. And if there's something there you don't want bound, um, you actually just click that button and then hit X to delete it. It's pretty simple overall, but there are a ton of options, so it can take some time to really get it to how you want it to be. Um, but make sure you get it to how you want it to be because it's going to end up determining how comfortable you are when you're flying your ship. Now occasionally, CIG is going to release an update that could potentially cause your key bindings to be removed, and that's a huge hassle. So I would suggest that you proactively plan on exporting your key binds to ensure that you don't lose out on them later. Now to do this, on the same screen at the bottom, you're going to see control profiles. And if you click on this once, you're going to get several different options, but the one you want is export control settings. That's going to give you a prompt where you can then rename your binds and then save them for later use. In the event that they actually end up resetting at a later time, or maybe you just have a gamepad for certain game activities or a mouse and keyboard for others, you can just click this same box and upload the one that you want by clicking on its name. It's a really helpful tool that I think you should probably take the time to utilize to prevent a pain in the ass later on down the line. So now that we have this out of the way, there's a couple different ways to get into the game from here, and it depends on what you're wanting to do. The hangar is the closest thing that we have right now to what we're going to have in the final game. And right now, the hangar gives you the option to see your ships that are hangar ready, or you can go to the elevator in the hangar and access different locations that have been released. Where it stands today, you have the option to go to Art Corp, which is kind of the social module, and you can walk around and see other players, visit shops, and get kind of that feel for the planet side experience. The other option at this moment is to go to Port Alazar at Crusader, and this is the space station that's orbiting the gas giant. This is where the real meat and potatoes are at the moment because you can pull a ship and go out exploring, you can fight, you can get into some FPS combat. There's different options available from this location. The other way, and this is the quicker way to get into the game, is to bypass the hangar and just click the universe button. Now this isn't going to be the way that the final game is going to end up working, but for the time being here in Alpha, it's a quick and easy way to get to these locations. Once you click universe, you can choose between Arc Corp or Port Alazar, and then hit launch. Either way you do it, though, you're going to end up getting to the same place. And once you get to Port Alazar, you're waking up in a bed. And from here, you're going to want to exit and run either left or right. It doesn't really matter, but at either side, there's going to be a set of stairs that you're going to run down to, until you get to this bank of monitors in the center of that room. This is where you're going to call up your ships. And to do that, you're going to hit F to interact with the monitor. And you'll see your current flyable ship inventory listed here for you to choose from. Now you can pick whatever you like by clicking the name and then clicking request ship. 
Now this is a common place where I see people getting stuck, and just know that while F interacts with the console, Control F gets you out of it. Now that you have your ship selected, it's important to know how to find it. And there's two large landing pads located outside where the big ships like the Constellation and the Retaliator are going to spawn. These locations are currently A9 and A10. Those are the big pads. And when you're trying to find the landing pads, look for the signs because they're really going to help you out. And they're located up on the ceiling. Now you're only going to see one hallway leading to A9 and the other one's going to be leading to A10. If you pull anything smaller than a Constellation or a Retaliator right now, you're going to be getting your ships from pads A1 through A8. And they're split up into um, groups of four. There's a lot of doors in this room, so the best way that I personally have found to figure out where to run to is to look for the big bronzy brown banner. And I know that pads A1 through A4 are on the left, and A5 through 8 are on the right side of that banner. But regardless of your hallway, follow it until you see the yellow doors, which is the inner airlock, and select the panel on the left by pressing F. And once those doors open, head into the airlock where you're going to see another panel on the inside ready for you to press F. This is going to depressurize the airlock and it's going to open up the outer doors allowing you to go outside and move out of. Now if you're on a larger landing pad it's pretty obvious where to go but the smaller pads are divided up a bit more so follow the signs. But the general rule of thumb is that the first uh, two numbers are going to be on the left and the last two numbers are going to be on the right. So once you come out um, A1 and A2 are on the left, A3 and A4 are on the right. Head to your ship, take off and you're ready to rock. It's great. Now a little bit of etiquette here is worth mentioning because it really sucks to run to the airlock and have that door slam in your face. So before you close the airlock, turn around. Just see if somebody else is coming before you close those doors. It's only going to take you a second, but it's going to save them a lot more time. Um, it's just really the nice thing to do considering we're all citizens in this lovely little world that uh, Roberts has created. So now that you know how to pull your ship and now you know where to find it, it's important to know how to use it. And this isn't going to be an overall flight lesson, but you do need to know that things have changed from Arena Commander days. You now have four different flight speeds, with the first being Precision, and you can tell what mode you're in on your HUD based on the three-letter designation. For takeoff, landing, or just kind of precise, slow movements, um, you're going to default to or need to put yourself into Precision Flight Mode. This severely caps your speed, but that's a very good thing when it comes to uh, you know trying to land and do those precise movements because it's really easy to crash at high speeds. This is going to be perfect for things like landing, maneuvering out of a crowded area, or just coming to a stop near your EVA location. And once you're ready to pick up speed, the default key mind is going to be V, which is changing your flight mode. Press it once as your throttle is up and you're going to be placed into SCM, or Space Combat Maneuvering. This is the closest to what we've been used to, with speeds being somewhere between 150 and 300 meters per second. This is the flight mode, or the fight mode, I should say. It's the one we're used to doing combat in, because you have good agility and decent speed. It's kind of your standard travel for short ranges. If you drop down to precision again, um, or if you want to do that, you just need to throttle down and press V to be dropped into that mode. But if you're looking for even more speed, you have cruise, um, which you then press V from SCM to jump it up. And you'll notice the speeds are increasing drastically, with top speeds being over 1,000 meters per second, kind of depending on your ship. This is used to get from point A to point B when you're not using your quantum drive. Um, now, this option also has some value in combat. And, you know, I think I like it for things like if I'm in a big fight and I need to get away just long enough to get into a better position, or if I'm planning on running away. It's a good way to create distance between you and the other person, or just to get ready for quantum travel. Now, there is a definite downside to using cruise, though, because while you will be faster, maneuvering pays the price and it will be severely limited. The last flight mode is quantum, and this is a drive that you need to kind of spool up by engaging the computer to show you the different destinations that you can head to. You do this by default by pressing B, and you'll notice the targets pop up on your HUD. And once the ship is pointed at one, you can use the middle mouse button by default to engage the drive and jump, which gives you that nice pr pretty little visual. Um, now, you aren't limited to just those targets, though, because if you engage your quantum computer and this ju just jump to some random destination, you can do that, and you can drop out at a random point. Right now, that has limited value, but you can certainly play with it, or at least use it as a tactic to kind of get away from a fight. CIG was nice enough to give us some missions to uh, kind of play with and complete as well, 
And these are all really designed around finding things in space or going to help repair a comm station while fighting pirates. While you can often just jump to a comm array to kind of start those, um, you also have some that are going to be located within your Moby Glass. And you can pull these up by using F9 and then selecting Journal. And your journal is going to give you various things that you can go and do and try. Um, and it's really going to be your guide for different things that you can do in this little universe. It's also going to update with new information on various missions that you're trying to complete. The Moby Glass is going to have other utilities that you can see that are built in, but they're not currently in game yet. So don't worry if you click on something and it's not functional. Nothing's broken, it's just not developed yet. So let's show you one of those comma rays because it also covers another important aspect that you need to learn to kind of play this to its fullest right now. And once you get to a comma ray, you're going to notice the NPC good guys are fighting the NPC bad guys of the pirates. And they're going to ask for your help to get the comma ray back online. Now while you can go straight for the array, um, protect your ship a little bit and try to kill off a few of the pirates before actually trying to fix the comma ray. But when, whenever you're ready, you're going to notice that there's kind of openings that you can take advantage of at these arrays. You're going to fly up to it, but carefully. <laughs> Don't forget your flight modes. It's really easy to crash into it if you're not paying attention. But once you're in position, press Control F to leave the seat and then exit your ship. Once you're out of your ship, um, you're going to control your character in what seems to be a very intuitive way. Um, with the thrusters that are on your spacesuit, with W being up, S being down, A and D being left and right. Um, and then you also can use Q and E, which are going to kind of rotate your character. Now you're going to move to the, you're going to kind of move your guy. You got to kind of position him, but you're going to boost him towards um, the, the station or the comrade where you see the opening, head down until you see a panel, click the panel using the F key, and all of a sudden you're going to get more objectives as the uh, comrade comes back online. Boom! You're not quite done because after it's been completed, you're going to want to head back to your ship and continue on to complete the darn thing. Now, as you would expect, with space combat, your ship is going to take some damage. Or at the very least, you're going to need to fill up on munitions if you're a really good pilot and have the ability to stay alive for longer periods of time. There's a special little place in the universe right now called Cry Astro. And here they have these little drones that will fix your ship or top your munitions off. To get there, you're going to pull up your quantum computer and point towards Cryastro and make the jump. And once you're there, you're going to fly towards the station. You're going to look at you for your key binds because I can't remember what they are at this point since I've changed mine so many times. Um, and you're going to basically, um, you know, find the one that's going to be set for landing. You don't really need these set up, but it does make your life a lot easier. You can put yourself in landing mode, you can select the landing pad, and once you're close enough, you can even do an automatic land to make sure that you're not taking damage when you're trying to set your delicate ship down. Now, for those of you in large ships, there is a large pad located at the bottom of the uh, Cryastro station, but for everybody else, there's plenty of other pads up top. Fly up, land, and enjoy the sight of these little drones buzzing around, fixing you up. Um, and you're probably not going to get totally fixed up if you're really damaged, but you can repeat the process if necessary, or you can just say, hey, it's good enough, I'm on my way. Getting into games with friends right now isn't exactly an easy process, because there are there's just a lot of people playing right now, and the servers aren't really holding a lot of people in each instance yet. So to help increase the odds, hit F11 to pull up your friends list. Now you need to be friends in-game for this to work. And you can either just add them from this menu, or you can add them on the RSI site. Either way though, it acts really wonky to start, and you need to activate your mouse by pressing the left alt and space buttons. By doing so, you're going to free up your mouse to be able to move around, and you can scroll through your friends list. And if you see someone that's online, you can click on their name and hit invite to party. Now that's a big step because when you're looking for servers from the universe menu or from the elevator in your hangar, you're now going to see if your contacts are in certain servers and you can try to select those ones to try and join them in the server that they're currently in. Keep in mind though that the uh, server number means nothing right now. So if somebody tells you that they're in server C42, you may see them in B12. It's kind of like bingo, but it has less meaning. Sorry grandma, it's just true. Now, speaking of social type things, you can also pull up chat by pressing F12. And this is going to be a small box on your screen. And if you want to type, just press enter, type in what you want to say, and hit enter again. Now, it appears that chat can also be found across the entire map for the time being. So, what we have been doing is having people, when jumping into a server, just type something in chat and see if you can see it in the chat box. Because that will let you know that you've successfully met up or not. 
But regardless of that, being able to communicate with people who aren't your in-game friends is an important thing to know, especially now that multi-crew ships are out. And the last thing I wanted to hit on today is going to be getting into FPS combat. And there's one location in the system that's really dedicated to first-person shooting, and that's going to be Security Post Korea. Quantum over to Korea, find a nice landing spot, and head on inside. Now, I would highly encourage you to slow your roll, pull out your pistol, and start playing a little bit tactfully here because there's hostiles in this station. Other players are here because they want to fight you. Now, there's a few places to get assault rifles in this base. Um, you know, some being upstairs by kind of some of the back stairs in the upper airlocks, and then downstairs in the middle of one of the lobbies. Um, there's a few locations. So if you're moving towards one and you notice somebody's camping one of the locations, you can try to move to go to a better armed place to get a better weapon and then come back and deal with that threat. There's also ammo in both of these locations as well. So if you're camp or you're kind of holding down this fort, you're just mowing people down, don't forget to go back and get ammo because you can reload your assault rifles. And it's good to know that Korea is just kind of an overall accepted combat area. So even flying in this zone can be kind of a dangerous proposition. But if you can actually make it into Korea, it's a pretty fun place to be. So I know I kept that brief, but there was a ton of information to cover. So if there's questions that I didn't talk about that you want covered, or maybe just something you want more detail on, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a blast in 2.0. Um, stay tuned for a whole lot more content because things are getting real excited. I'll catch you guys later. Take care.